Hi there. Welcome back to Water Nerds. I'm Kazaya, and with me today is Annalise. And we're here to talk about something that we've always been talking about. I don't know any other way to put it. I mean, we talk about water quality a lot. We talk about emerging contaminants. We talk about um, uh, other contaminants that have kind of been around for a long time. Uh, we talk about water quality. It's really important to us that you know what's going on in your drinking water. Um, but very recently, um, CNN um, posted a pretty, pretty big article about water quality in America and how I believe it's 87 million Americans, which is about a fourth of the population of this country, uh, have at least one violation in their water quality. Now the violations are set forth by uh, the EPA um, as far as contaminants and, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as contaminants and different things like that. And a fourth of Americans are drinking illegal water, like drinking water that has, that's exceeding those contaminant levels. Um, and we're here to talk about that article today and kind of uh, dig into it so you can be in the know, because, you know, we'd like for you to be in the know. All right. So, Annalise, what the ham sandwich? Okay, so, like, what what did CNN, like, reference? Like, what, what, where did this all start? Yeah. So, first of all, I think it's really great that CNN is acknowledging that there's a uh, problem with drinking water mm -hmm. in the U.S. Definitely. This is kind of the first time in a while that they've said, or that a major media source has said, we have a serious problem. Mm -hmm. um, so, CNN referenced a report by the Natural Resources Defense Council, or the NRDC, that they did last year. Mm -hmm. um, and in the report, in the NRDC's report, they have a really uh, great map that says all of the different violations um, throughout the entire country. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, wait, so what, what's, like, what's a violation? Like, what constitutes uh, a violation? Yeah. So this is kind of where it gets a little bit iffy. So mm -hmm. a violation isn't just being in exceedance or out of compliance <laughs> with a water quality standard. Mm -hmm. um, a violation could be a reporting violation. So if a mm. municipality failed to report something or um, failed to test for something, mm -hmm. the state would um, give them a violation. And then once they are in violation, you know, they have to be really transparent with their constituents mm -hmm. and make sure that like they know about the violation and then and that their water might be compromised or it could have been reporting right so hmm. and another thing is that the NRDC report only talked about regulated contaminants so wait so if they only talk about regulated contaminants that's just as far as what like lead like the lead and copper oil, like lead it's only as far as like yeah. So there's 90 regulated right. contaminants. So it's um, the the popular ones are lead, arsenic, mm -hmm. disinfection byproducts, mm -hmm. um, things like that. But it doesn't cons it doesn't even cover like PFAS. No, chromium six. Chromium six. One four dioxane. One four dioxane. Wow. It doesn't cover any of that. And those there was some there was another recent article that where the EPA admitted that Gen X, which is a form of PFAS, mm -hmm. causes cancer. Yeah, absolutely. But it takes, but on the same, on the other side of that, it takes so long mm -hmm. for a contaminant to get on the list right. to get regulated, right? Right, yeah, exactly. <sighs> so, so what, so you said they only covered regulated contaminants. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all that was in NRDC's report? Yeah. Yeah. And there is, yeah. It's kind of hard for an organization like NRDC to get that that data. Mm -hmm. So I can understand why they didn't um, report on the unregulated contaminants because municipalities aren't required to test for them right. unless your state regulates right. an unre regulates. unregulated contaminant like you know California or Michigan. So I, I think I think it's important to say here that some states do kind of step beyond what the EPA has considered a regulated contaminant and they add to, they either add to the list, you know, like we're also going to regulate this and this and this because maybe they've seen kind of an ongoing problem yeah. in that state. Okay. So back to the regulation, like 
is it easy? Is it easy to violate a drinking water regulation? It's not easy. It's no? actually very, very difficult for uh -oh. a municipality to violate a drinking water regulation because... I mean, these 90 contaminants were mm -hmm. regulated in the 1990s, and these regulations are so old, they, they're just not great. So for a municipality to be in exceedance or be out of compliance with one is kind of like, you really have to do the bare minimum in order to be, in, you know, to violate a drinking water regulation. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Just for point of reference, anyone who was born in 1990 is now 28 years old. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Okay, so here's the thing with us because I think because of the platform we have created in regard to kind of a, a level of transparency mm -hmm. with people when it comes to water quality, we get bombarded with questions about water. Like a lot of people have hit, have hit us up about like water quality. Um, and so to see an article like this, um, that's something like, I guess, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. I think that the takeaway from the article is mm -hmm. that it, it just didn't cover the scope of the problem. Okay. By far. So um, Madison, Wisconsin is probably the best example of this. Mm -hmm. So Madison um, recently, a few years ago, did a full lead line replacement. They had tried a bunch of corrosion control technologies. Nothing was working. So mm -hmm. they said, you know what? We're just going to replace every single lead service line. Oh, wow. And um, in the past, like, five years, you see their consumer confidence reports getting better. You know, their lead levels are Increasing. around, like, 3.2 parts per billion, which is, which is okay. That's it's pretty not low. Great, but we've seen much higher. Um, so, like, their regulated contaminants are pretty good. Yeah. But if you look deeper and you see chromium-6 levels, they are out of control, like 1,300 parts per um, trillion for That's a lot. So that just goes to show that, you know, the map provided by NRDC is great, but it doesn't show unregulated contaminants. And it might make a city like Madison, Wisconsin look really, really good in terms of drinking of water. Lead. But there's so many things that aren't being considered. So here's a hodgepodge. What if, by some miracle, EPA, like uh, Andrew Wheeler, Hops on a mic tomorrow. No, it's Saturday. He's not going to hop. Hops on a mic Monday <laughs> and says, hey, we're going to add PFAS chromium-6 to our list of regulated. Forget the red tape. Forget the years of waiting. We're going to add it to our uh, list of regulated contaminants. These are the, the MCLs. These are the maximum contaminant levels. If you exceed those, you're in violation. How much bigger would this be? I, it would be, people would be astonished and very frightened. Not to be fear-mongering at all, but... There's no good news when it comes to Chromium-6 and PFAS. No, no. Um, That's why it's so important to dig deeper than your consumer confidence report. Mm -hmm. and make sure you're staying up-to-date with water quality news, like ours. <laughs> So what, I guess, a concerned person who may be in a town that or city that is, has experienced some, like, water quality issues that they know about, or there's this, this growing, it's not really growing, it's kind of always been around, but you're hearing more and more school systems um, that are have, finding lead in the taps of water fountains and bathrooms and stuff like that. Like, it's, and some of them are not being transparent with parents and communities, there's, huge like everywhere like like from california to to charlotte to new orleans to chicago to it's crazy and so a concerned person would ask so besides you know keeping up with the water quality report that you know your city is supposed to publish and make public and available every year um what else can they do like yeah. it unfor it seems like more and more when you consider infrastructure and you consider just kind of regulatory stuff and, and, and different stuff like that, it's a lot for just regular Joe American to navigate. Like, so what do they, what can they do at this point? I feel like it, 
it's gonna fall back on the consumer, consumer yeah. unfortunately. So Environmental Working Group has a great um, website mm -hmm. that you can type in your zip code and get some information about your water. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just making sure that you're staying current and talking to your elected officials and saying, we have a problem, what can we do? Mm -hmm. Are things in the works mm -hmm. to make this better, so. True, and and many, um, one of the things we talked about before is some municipalities offer free lead testing. Um, it's up to you to kind of reach out to whoever your water and power is or you know however your utilities are regulated and see if you can get a free lead test to see if you got lead coming out of the yeah. tap. And you know, you can take some next steps to ensure your family's health and safety. That's, um, wow, this is, uh, well, okay, so, one more question. Why? Now, if NRDC came out with this report like oh, a year ago plus, why do you think CNN felt the need to like report on it now? I think that probably within the past six months, mm -hmm. the amount of water quality issues in the U.S. has been crazy. Mm -hmm. It seems like every day a new town is saying, we have PFAS in our water, we have chromium-6 in our water, we have extremely high levels of lead in our schools. Mm -hmm. So I think within the past six months, it's been a really, really hot topic. And I think it was really great that CNN said, all right, we need to, you know, we need to make a statement here. We need mm -hmm. to let people know that this could be affecting them as well. Right. So. So is there a... I think there's a figure that EPA gave um, as to how much it will cost oh, yeah. to fix America's water system, it said. So I think it was like $743 billion, and that they're just talking about fixing it in terms of regulated contaminants. So this is not even... So this doesn't include the chromium-6 or the 1,4-dioxane or the PFAS, which is... Okay, seven hundred and forty three billion dollars. Yeah. Most of that would go towards lead line replacements. Right. So that doesn't that oh boy. So I wonder if this leads municipalities to kind of search for a quick fix. Yeah, it it could. <laughs> Which is that's a little scary. Like you were talking about Madison, Wisconsin, and how, I mean, granted, repla replacing service lines is no quick fix, no. but it doesn't address all the water quality issues. It, it addresses the regulated right, ones. Right, and that still is really expensive. Mm -hmm. I think it was, even after subsidies, each um, household had to pay $1,300, which is just not feasible in wow. most places in the U.S. Thirteen hundred. Yeah. Each each household. Each household because it's you know the, there's lead service lines in throughout the city and then there's the ones that go directly into your homes. So that's what they were replacing. So I get seven hundred and forty three billion dollars. That is an outstanding amount of money. That is something. Okay. Well. <laughs> This is this is kind of what it is. Um, it's water quality is a growing, a growing concern, even more so in this country. And um, we try to give you, you know, information you can use so you can be in the know um, and make the best decisions for you and your family. No scare tactics. No. Uh, no, that's not. But we react to <laughs> bad news just like anyone else. Right. Um, and we want everybody to have clean drinking water. Yeah. I think that's I think that's a basic, you know, thing for everyone to have good drinking water. So um, thank you so much, Annalise, for breaking that down. And um, if you have any questions, that's what we do. We, we find the answers. Um, and you can hit us up at hello at hydroviv.com or you can visit our website at hydroviv.com and click on the live chat feature. And our live chat is actually alive. You'll talk to a human every single time. Um, and we'll, we're willing to answer your questions about water quality, your concerns about, you know, things that are happening in your city about water quality. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in to Water Nerds.